All right, chapter 32, fluoride leaches copper from pipes. Let's get to the big issues first. Do we even need fluoride for our teeth? There is no evidence that fluoride is good for the teeth, only many claims. So here's a link, water fluoridation and the quality of evidence problem at fluoridealert.org. Quote, as far as the York team were able to determine, there are no randomized controlled trials for water fluoridation. It's not that they couldn't have been done. Of course they could have been done, but there are none. So the next issue, is fluoride even good for the bones? No, it causes skeletal fluorosis, which is weak bones. If you just look it up at Wikipedia, it's obvious. Skeletal fluorosis is a bone disease caused by excessive accumulation of fluoride leading to weakened bones. The average American has a fluoride level in their bodies just under the level that would lead to the beginning of skeletal fluorosis. Of course, 66% of Americans do not have arthritis, but about 33% do. Arthritis hits harder the older you are, and of course, fluoride has a 20-year half-life in the body and accumulates, and thus accumulates more with age. High fluoride is found with high copper and lead in pipes. Quote, High levels of fluoride, copper, and lead detected in water for hundreds of Sandy City residents, City says. The CDC even admits that fluoride binds to copper in pipes by providing the solution to the problem, fluorosilicates rather than sodium fluoride. The CDC says, quote, link, the most common forms of fluoride for approximately 92% of the drinking water that is fluoridated are fluorosilicates as either fluorosilicate silicic acid or sodium fluorosilicate. Using fluorosilicates to fluoridate drinking water adds silica, a corrosion inhibitor, to the water and increases the silicates available for stabilizing the pipe surface, which, con which contributes to reduced corrosion. Note, it does not say eliminates corrosion, reduced corrosion. So, fluoride actually binds to copper. There is a copper fluoride molecule and it's water soluble. It's copper two fluoride. The stability, and it's at, right at Wikipedia, copper 2 fluoride. Here's another uh, study title. The stability of metal halide complexes in aqueous solution, nickel, copper, and zinc from 1956. They appeared to conclude that copper fluoride and zinc fluoride bond is 10 times as strong as the copper chloride and zinc chloride bonds on page 7 to the last paragraph. Quote, copper to fluoride may bind with phosphorus also, making it even more stable. Thank you. That's it.